Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. We continue today our quest to solve the 2020 final exam. We already tackled question number one and question number two. So now we can move on to question number three, which reads a horizontal pipe, 0.15 meters in diameter and one meter in length, with a surface temperature of 150 degrees Celsius is placed in an air at room temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Estimate the rate of heat loss as a result of natural convection. Okay, so we have a natural convection problem in our hands. We are to estimate the rate of heat loss, so we know this is our Q dot, that is how the energy changes with respect to time. And we're interested in natural convection, so that already, you know, as we're reading this, we're already thinking, okay, so I'll probably be dealing with Grasshoff and Rayleigh and these lovely non-dimensional numbers, right? The other thing that I should be aware of is that I have a pipe, so therefore I need to be aware of my characteristic length in a pipe, which is a diameter, but we can check that out to be sure. All right, so let's draw what we have. So the air is at, the, the pipe is at 150 and air is at 20. So energy is going to be flowing from the pipe into the air. All right, so this is the things we did before. So now we're doing number three. And we have a pipe, so let's go ahead and draw a pipe. Oops, one too many. There you go. Um, this pipe is at 150 Celsius. And then we have T infinity here somewhere. I probably want to do this this way like so. And then we have T infinity at 20 Celsius. So we know beforehand, before you check anything, that Q is going to be flowing from the pipe to the air. What else? Well, we're looking at natural convection. So we know these molecules here will be heated up and then it'll go up as cooler molecules come down. And that's going to be happening throughout the whole thing. And we want to know exactly how much energy is flowing. Now, you, I would not expect you to memorize any of the equations. I don't know any of the equations, but we have our formula sheet exactly for that. So the formula sheet is available. And this is just, I just you know, took a snapshot of it from the huge list that you have. And this is just empirical correlations for the average Nussel number for natural convection over surfaces. We have a vertical plate, we have an inclined plate, we have a horizontal plate, we have vertical cylinder, horizontal cylinder, and a sphere. So it will be one of these two because it's horizontal, then it's going to be this guy here, right? So we are looking at, um, oh, it's already giving us the Characteristic length, how nice of them. So diameter, right, cool. So diameter, we are to use this equation so long as our Rayleigh number is below 2 to the 12th. And our empirical correlation says that Nusso equals 0 0.6 plus uh, 0.387 Rayleigh to the 1 sixth, 1 over 0.559 divided by Prandot, and all that to the 9 sixteenth, and all that to the 8 27th, and everything here is squared. All right, so in other words, what are we, all right, what are we interested in? interested in Rayleigh numbers, so that means that we need Grasshoff and Prandot, we need the Prandot number, and that's pretty much it. Nice. So not that not that hard, right? Just, you know, plug and play. Nice, easy, six marks for this question. We, um, the other thing is, just so you know, I've put down here, this is also from the formula sheet, so not, nothing that you need to remind yourselves, but Grasshoff number is calculated like so, so we need, you know, gravity beta, um, beta which we can get for air as one over the film temperature, temperature of the wall, temperature of infinity, characteristic length, and then the viscosity, in this case, the kinematic viscosity, but I prefer using the dynamic viscosity. And uh, Rayleigh is also reminded you guys here, so if you forgot about Rayleigh mid-test, you can always go there and remind yourselves that this is just grass of time, Prandtl. Brilliant. Now, the other thing, which is what I want to touch base on, is that the hydraulic diameter is just four times the cross-sectional area by the perimeter. So if you're ever in doubt what is your characteristic length for something, you can always do that, right? So in this case here, we can just go ahead and do it just so you know. What is the cross-sectional area? It's this area here in blue, and that will be just pi r squared, right? So pi r squared. So it's four times that divided by the perimeter. What's the perimeter? Well, this guy here, right? And that's just the circumference of a circle, which is two pi r. So that's going to be two pi r. Guess out. Guess what happens? Pi and pi go away. This r and this r go away. And then we have four and two, so this is become two. So this is equal to what? Because what? Two times r. What is that? Well, that's a diameter, right? Diameter. So hydraulic diameter for a pipe or cylinder is going to be just a diameter. And that's easy peasy, right? What is the diameter in this case? Point, if, so let's just put them down here. So this is 0. 0.15 meters, and the length is one meter. So let me get rid of this. Oops, that's not what I wanted. 
want to do the same. I just want to do this guy here is one. Yeah, I'm like brilliant. Okay, so let's find out what is our film temperature. Let's find out what's grasshop. Let's find out it's really see if our condition is met. Then we plug in the equation and find nestle. Oh, actually, I should probably write that down because it's a big long I, right? So um, I'm going to find my film temperature. With that, I'm going to try to find grasshop. With that, I'm going to find really with that i'm going to find uh, my nestle if the condition is met with that i can find h with that i can find q which is what i'm looking for that's a game plan all right so first things first this is air so air is in kelvin so i wanted to film in kelvin so i want to do 20 celsius plus 273 plus what's the other one 150 plus 273 and i want to divide the whole thing by two to get the average of the film temperature which turns out to be 358 so 300 and 58 Kelvin. That's my film temperature. So this is where I'm going to grab all the properties that I'm looking for. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to find Grasshoff. And Grasshoff is the gravity times beta times, it's a big one, I don't remember the whole thing, times the difference in temperature. Yeah, difference in temperature. T wall minus T infinity. Characteristic length to a third divided by um, this and then density. Cool, so I need to grab my properties to be able to solve this. So what do I know? I know these guys already, I know this guy. So I need to grab this fella, actually, I know this one too. So I need to grab this fella, this fella, this fella. Nothing said about pressure, so I'm gonna assume we are at one atmosphere. That was horrible, one atmosphere. And I wanna grab everything I can for 358. Uh, beta, beta, don't get beta from the table, I actually get beta by doing one over T film. In this case, T film is 358, so one over 358, that's going to be my beta. Just watch out, please, because this has to be in Kelvin. If you have this in, in um, Celsius, it's going to be incorrect. So watch out, that's something that you might forget. Um, so we can, you know, we can calculate this or just plug this into here. That's fine, either way. All right, so we're going to go to the table after this fella and this fella. So I'm going to use the same table we were using for the previous problem. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Cool. Um, let's get rid of these things. All right, so we're not interested in pressure changes. We are interested in this guy and this guy. And our temperature is 358, so it's going to be between this fellow and this fellow. So I'm going to interpolate for these two values here. I'm going to interpolate for these two values here. That's what I want to do. So I want to do that maybe here, down here. So I'm going to have my temperature. My temperature. I'm going to have my density, I'm going to have my, this place, my dynamic viscosity, so 350, 400, and my 358. By the way, when you're doing this, you can be sure that your uh, property should be closer to 350 than 400, right, because 358 is closer to 350. So that is a way to know if you messed up along the way or not. Uh, this is 0.998, this is 0.8826, this is 2. 075, this is 2.286 times 10 to the minus 5, remember? Times 10 to the minus 5. Don't forget that here. All right, so let's interpolate. Okay, and that gives us 0.9795. Linear interpolation, this gives us 2.1876. Oh, wait, 76. We're too many. Oh, so again, this is way closer to this guy than this guy, right? That makes sense. Brilliant. Okay, so now that we have these fellas, let me go ahead and copy this and just carry this around with me. Yeah, copy, yeah, copy. Cool. Um, let's put them down here because we're going to need all of them. All of them. Okay, and just a reminder, we're doing, whoops, where is it? Press off. Here it is. So we're doing this, right? Gravity, beta, difference in temperature. Characteristic length to the third, and then oh, this is squared. I didn't square this. And then this, I just instead of doing the dynamic, uh, sorry, the kinematic one, I did the dynamic one, which is the same thing with the uh, density. Cool. So just let me square the things that I forgot to square. So this is squared, and this is also squared. Oh, so Grasshoff is uh, right. No space here. Let's see. Grasshoff is 9.81. Then beta is going to be one over 358. Difference in temperature, that's uh, 150 minus 20, 
doesn't matter, Calvin or Celsius because it's a difference. Characters of length, diameter, 0. 0.15. What's it get? 0. 0.15. That's it. To the third. Density, this guy here. Um, 0. 0.9795 squared. And then divided by 2.1088 squared. Oops, times 10 to the minus 5 squared. Brilliant. What does that give us? That renders. Big number, obviously. Two, five, nine, four, come on, four, one, one, seven, three. Okay, so you can go ahead and do 2.6 times 10 to the seventh ish. Just for us to check the, um, I'm going to plug this in when I'm calculating this, so, but just to check if our condition is met, I'm going to use just approximation there. Okay, so then next step is, oh, I forgot to get print up on the the table can do that now so we got it in erase what we had before because i'm still in print same thing so print is going to be between these two guys here between the green and the, the, the two blues so 0 0.6 697 and 0 0.689 interpolation is 0 0.695 And if I seven two, so let's go ahead and say it's six here. Cool. So this is the value that I need to multiply to get my really number. So it'll be Prandtl times s half, so zero point that times the two point six. Well, well, might as well do the whole thing, but just for the sake of checking, it's about one point eight. The seven. Cool. So remember the uh, condition. We need to ensure that it meets. It has to be below ten to the twelve. So all good. Green tick. We're good to use this fellow here. Okay. So let's write that down. This guy. And we need to plug in every single thing for it. So I'm interested in finding my nestle number. And to find my nestle number, I'm going to have to plug in a big fellow, which is 0.6 plus three eight eighty seven. Times really, and then really is going to be the point. Actually, have this copied right. Well, um, Prandtl times for the Grasshoff 25, 94, 1, um, All that to the one sixth. So this is to the one sixth. Then divided by. Brackets, that's one plus point five five nine uh, divided by Prandtl point six ninety six to the nine sixteenth and the whole thing, the whole brackets to the eight twenty seventh. So appreciate how beautiful this is, isn't it? Come on, there's plenty of space to do a mistake here when doing calculation. So just so you know, the way that I did it, when I did it, I didn't write down, I didn't put the whole thing down like so. I did it just looking at my values and inputting to my calculator. And then I do, did it two or three times just to be sure because obviously there's a lot of room to goof around here. And then, so my initial number came out to be about 33.58. Okay, and now this is the juicy part, right? Because we know this is equal to h characters characteristic length which in this case is the diameter once again divided by okay and now therefore now we can find 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 our um h which is what we're after the whole thing so this is three three fifty eight times k i'm going to have to go and grab k from the table divided by 0 0.15 my k ends up being 0.03 And this ends up being six eight five three. Okay, right. again, unit wise, what we're doing here is we have this guy here, which is what we found. No, so no units, dimensionless. Then we have our k over here, and no k is watts per meters per kelvin. And then we have 
the diameter down there, which is meters. So our unit ends up being unit for H, which is difference in temperature meters squared. And last but not least, we want to find Q. That's what the whole thing is about. We want to find what is the rate of energy leaving, and we're going to apply Newton's law of cooling, and that will be area T wall minus T infinity. And we have everything we need, right? Because this is going to be my 6.853 times the area. What's the area of the, the outside of the cylinder? So that's going to be 2 pi r times my length of the cylinder. And then this is going to be 150 minus 20. Um, 2 pi r, that's 2. 2 r is going to be my diameter. So we can substitute this for instead of pi, you're going to have diameter there. So it's going to be 0.15. And the length of the thing, the whole thing is one meter, so it's going to be one meter here. Um, Q is about 420 watts. Approximately 420 watts. And then just to be sure, unit wise, what we have here is this fell here, so watts meter squared per Kelvin, right? This fell here. Then meters and meters, meters for the diameter, meters for the length. And difference in temperature in Kelvin or in Celsius. So meter squared Kelvin with the watts. Watts. And that is our answer. Okay, so I took my time. Oh, actually, before I finish, let me just go ahead and uh, I didn't do this because I did it before, but the K, where did you get K from? Same place, right? Conductivity, which is here. This is my K. So you can see here it's going to be between these two values here and interpolated there. I think that's where I got the uh, 0 0.03. Oh, actually, it didn't even interpolate, okay, because it's 0 0.03, and then it, I didn't do the this, these little decimal points. Can we're going to get about 450, uh, 420. Yeah. All right, so 420 watts is my answer. I took my time, took my time to do it uh, here. When I did it for myself, I did it quite f way faster because, you know, I took all the values at once, I didn't go up and down back and forth. I plugged these guys in and just kept it, saved them on the calculator. And like I said, I just did this two or three times without writing down everything, just to be sure that I wasn't uh, messing anything up when putting the calculator. And then, you know, these, these, this stuff is straightforward, hopefully. So this fella here, this uh, cylinder that's lying on the lying on the floor on its side, is going to be losing about 420 joules every second due to natural convection. That does it for question number three, and I'll see you guys soon for question number four. If this video helped you out, consider giving it a like. If not, we'll talk soon.